recording. Great, rolling, great, thank you. Perfect. So, Mithy, can you tell me a little bit about the program and how did the idea of a program uh, appear? Why Venice and why this topic in particular? As I understand it, um, uh, uh, the European Cultural Academy actually approached David Howard in 2019 with the idea of doing a summer school through a, a vehicle developed by the Princess Foundation in association with Kellogg College, Oxford, um, uh, called the Global Centre for Healthcare and Urbanisation. And the Global Centre brings together researchers in evidence-based medicine and uh, sustainable urban development, and building on a joint program operated by the Princess Foundation and University of Oxford since 2010. And we thought, since we had been commissioning research on uh, how to build healthy cities, that it would be good to expand that into a program that attracted people from all ages, from around the world, uh, different intellectual and uh, skills backgrounds, and um, got them together to think about a, a, a particular, to, to focus on a design program, a project, uh, and, and we felt uh, Venice would be appropriate, because as a city, it has so many lessons for us in the future uh, uh, about, it has suffers from shrinking cities, from uh, rising water levels, from a whole lot of issues of over-sustainability and, and skill shortages, and, and many issues which cities will face in the future. And so, we had hoped, of course, to run it in 2020, the pandemic put a, an end to that, but also sharpened, I think, the focus of, of thinking around the world about healthy cities, because we had gone from a situation where we didn't really suffer or fear disease to a situation where everybody in the world had a sharpened awareness of health and disease and mortality, really, and, and the role of cities in shaping that. And I think after the pandemic, although that has really sharpened the focus on health and cities, I think we really have refocused on the role of cities in, in building a, a healthy population through active travel, through sustainable food processes, through uh, um, social sustainability, being close to work and um, education and other resources. And I think Venice has so much to teach us about that. Yes, I think um, uh, my experience of teaching summer schools um, in my previous job and the current job over the last uh, 25 years nearly and, and before that has shown me that uh, in order to, to create a, a collegiate feeling and to, to create a kind of common task is really important and, and we do that um, as, as architects and designers, I think by, by getting students to focus on a, on a difficult piece of, of the city, it's a piece of the city which is partially complete or, 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 or has some obvious problem, rather than focusing on, for example, uh, the beautiful parts of the city of which there are so many in Venice. So we chose to focus on Tronchetto, which is a 20th century artificial island to the, to the northwest of the city, built for car parking, which is partially occupied, I think. It's probably fair to say that um, the tourism uh, or, or the car-dominated future that was anticipated in mid-20th century hasn't fully eventuated. So the island, uh, which is partially complete, really presents an opportunity, I think, to address many of the issues which, I've, as I've said before, Venice faces and, uh, and perhaps in its, in its emptiness and differentiation from Venice can provide a solution to many of the, um, of the, uh, uh, the challenges that Venice faces. And I think what's been really brilliant about this cohort of students is, is the, the, the vision they've brought to, to Venice from around the world, from India, from Russia, from uh, 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 New Zealand, uh, 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 Poland, and Croatia, the United Kingdom, and, and other places, uh, experience and from a wide range of backgrounds and ages and, and, and life skills and so on. Uh, the, the amount of refreshing ideas, I think, that they've brought to this problem and to Venice, I think has been really, really um, very, very heartening. I think, you know, as I approach retirement in, in my career, it, it, it's really very good to see young people coming forward so full of passion and ideas and with so many brilliant thoughts about how we can build a better future together. It is the second year that you run the program. Um, how it has changed or evolved? Um, 
we were, I think, uh, very much in an experimental mode last year. And although we, we chose the same site, I think uh, we had as a first program uh, uh, um, not quite so many students and not quite such a definite idea about how we would use Venice as a model. Because now we've had the experience of teaching in Venice and we understand the city a little better and we have better contacts here, we've been able to draw on a wider range of resources, both spatially in terms of Venice, its situation in the lagoon and the other islands and, and the other resources within Venice, but also with a slightly better, I think, uh, knowledge of, of the physical geography of Venice, how it works as a place, how its economy, how its, uh, its hydrology, uh, um, and, and so on, how all these elements work together. And so we have, to use that knowledge to guide the students better through their, their research challenge. Okay. And then my, my last uh, question, any particular memory or memorable event that you had this last year? Uh, oh, gosh, <laughs> well, that's a difficult one because there are so many. And, um, you know, uh, uh, having visited Venice many times in the past, not least on my, uh, my, as part of my honeymoon in 1990, I think um, for me, uh, I was coming to back to a place that I thought was familiar and what has really been an absolute delight in, in teaching this summer school has been really getting under the skin of Venice and discovering a living city where one imagines that there is just uh, some sort of empty, empty shell dominated by tourism and, and, and seeing the, the little, uh, uh, the, the original life uh, that continues in the campos and, and in the evenings after the, the daily tourism uh, has disappeared. There's this quiet, beautiful, um, evocative, e e empty in a way, um, uh, a, a kind of a, a fantastic city living and breathing and, and with inhabitants and young people and children and, and young couples and stuff um, uh, filling, its, filling its squares and campos and children spilling out of, um, out of kindergartens and things. It's just absolutely marvellous. Thank you.